Good morning friends, thanks for coming back to Gear Facts. Today we're going to unbox the JVC multi-purpose speaker model XSN3119BA. Catchy. Let's open him up. And here's the manual, looks like we've got a remote control, a couple of batteries, and a USB cable. Well, first impressions are good, it seems to be a solidly built unit in the typical JVC sort of style. And of course this is always a treat. Ah, pleasing. That of course would be the illuminated display, and without checking the manual it looks pretty obvious what we've got here, so I'm going to try to power it up, see if there's any charge in it to start with. All right, and the JVC logo comes on too. When the music starts, we should see some light coming out of the actual speaker cones. Actually, I stand corrected. There is a light show button here. Let's switch it on and see what we got. All right. Looking a bit more closely at the top now, you might see on your display that this lettering is kind of pulsing, but that's just a mismatch with the camera's frame rate. It's actually a nice steady display. Very easy on the eyes. And we'll check in a moment to see if this display gives us the titles of the songs or any other details. Looks like we can put our MP3s on a USB stick or a micro SD card. The transport controls are very obvious. Back, forward and play pause in the middle there. Here's where you put your charger and very importantly we've got a line in socket. We'll be testing this with musical instruments in a moment so that's very important on gear facts. And there's a microphone socket as well with a standard size TSR jack so that's really good. We've already seen the on-off switch and the light show button. In the middle, we've got master volume and a bass and treble equalizer. Pretty handy little slot at the back there too for your phone or your iPod. Okay, let's get some sound into it. This old USB has some very old MP3 files that I used to demo some synthesizers back in Gearfax's early days. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, okay. Right, so it starts immediately. Okay, and if we flick through the files. Okay. Right, so when you skip through it immediately starts the next file. Doesn't show the name of the file. Does show the word pause when you've got it paused. And timer when you're playing. Let's go back one and try out this equalizer. Very good response in the equalizer controls there and it has plenty of volume. Let's push it to maximum. Okay, and no distortion at maximum volume, that's excellent. I have heard speakers of this size go a bit louder than this particular one, but I've got to say that's also usually at the expense of sound clarity, so I'm pretty happy with that. Alright, now I've kind of clumsily put it on top of my synth here, and we're going to see how it performs as a studio monitor. You need a lot of detail in sound to get this right, so this will put it to the test. I'm going to go to the mode button here, and I'm assuming that if I press mode, it's going to change it to, ah, oh, first option, line in, perfect. Alright, I'm turning my source up to maximum. And that's good, the speaker's not distorting, even though I'm pumping a very strong signal into it, and I've got plenty of headroom in the volume as well. Let's try an arpeggio. Well that's interesting, I got a lot more volume out of it through line in than I did from the USB. That would be thanks to the strong signal coming in through the cable from the synthesizer. But I'll say it again, it's great to see that that didn't distort the signal, even when both units were on maximum volume. Excellent performance. Okay, now let's plug in a microphone. Still in the line in mode. You are listening to my voice. 
with a little bit of feedback too. Okay, so there's a built-in delay effect when you speak into the microphone. Hello. Makes your singing sound a bit better or a bit less bad if you like me. Now let's take a look at the remote. There are no real surprises here, but one or two features that are pretty handy. A mute button, for example, when you press that, the display just flashes to show that it's muted. Would have been nice to just have the word mute there, but anyway. And then we've got volume up and down, the same transport controls replicated as they are on the top panel. Here we've got EQ functions too, so let's try some of those out. Back to the USB music. Okay, well those EQ functions seem to kind of override the effectiveness of these two. Me personally, I'd rather just use the controls and adjust it on the fly, but it is good to know that there are some EQ options. How many have we got? Okay, five. So that's plenty to satisfy any environment or musical taste. Last few things, we've got a looper there so we can play the same track over and over again. You can quickly select which track you want numerically. And up here, a U slash SD button. So you have to choose between USB and micro SD card if you've got both of them plugged in. Which is fair enough, because how else is it going to know which one to play from? One last look at the manual to see if there's anything that we've missed. No, it's all very user friendly and straightforward. Last thing in the box is that USB cable. There's no actual charger that comes with it, but it's USB, so you've probably got half a dozen of them in the house anyway. And finally, Bluetooth mode. We're in Bluetooth mode on the phone. Let's see what happens when we go to Bluetooth mode. Oh, that's the FM radio. We probably won't worry about testing that one. There's hardly any FM radio around anymore. We're on blue now, according to the display. I can only assume that that's Bluetooth. We've got an option to connect. There's our connect sound. Naturally we head straight to gear facts and I just want to scroll through my videos and play this one for you, Sony Party Speaker. I reviewed the Sony Party Speaker last week and so far it is not impressing me anywhere near as much as this JVC. Let's have a listen. What's the best kept secret to becoming a great singer? I'm going to uh, answer that question in 30 seconds. If you don't know it'll be a long road for me. Skip. Good morning gear facts people. Today we've got... Uh, that's what I always say. To today. Get to the music. Okay, let's turn it up. Well, as with using the USB earlier, with Bluetooth the volume is a little bit restricted. But for me, that's a pretty small criticism. There is a lot to love about this speaker. It's unbelievably light. It's got a good light show that you can override as well. A lot of speakers won't allow you to override the light show, which can be annoying. It's got great controls on the top, very responsive, classic JVC quality. And the clarity in that part of the demo where I connected the synthesizer through the line in, that was exceptional. I am loving the JVC XSN31198A. It only cost me about the same amount of money to buy this new as it did to buy that Sony party speaker second hand and frankly I think it outperformed it in just about every respect. Thanks for watching my review everyone. Please tell other people about Gear Facts and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.